what is going on everybody? This is Gabriel Jones giving you a drop assignment any chance I get. And today we have an album reaction from Miley Cyrus, Endless Summer Vacation. I haven't really thought about this since I reached adulthood, but Miley Cyrus is probably one of the best vocalists I grew up with as a child. She can make her voice pierce like no other, and that is a talent you have to respect. And ever since 2013, she's been using that talent in various ways. Throughout the decade, we've seen Miley take on so many different personas as an artist. She was a provocative partier on Bangers, a soft, easygoing country singer on Younger Now, and a defiant glam rocker on Plastic Hearts. For that last era, you have no idea how disappointed I was that Midnight Sky didn't have more staying power on the charts. Like, that song absolutely deserved better. Luckily, her current hit song, Flowers, has been gaining a lot of traction, peaking at number one for multiple weeks on the Hot 100. It'll be neat to see where she goes with the endless summer vacation era, and I'm here to explore it. Of course, I want to advise my viewers to leave a like and comment for this video because the more engagement the video receives, the more likely YouTube will pick it up in the algorithm, so I thank y'all for that. Also, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button because I could use all the support in the world and it would put a smile on my face. With all that, we are now going to get into endless summer vacation. Track number one, Flowers. All right, so we're starting off with the big hits. Well, can't go wrong with that. I already did a short reaction to this on TikTok. You can check that out for yourselves. The link is gonna be in the description. But you know, always a good way to uh, listen to it in the context of the album. We were right, till we built yeah, this entire relationship just crumbling down, you know? Gotta be stressful for Miley. Okay, the guitar strumming, you know, definitely catches the ears. That classic violin sound, you know, does a lot to capture your attention. You know, I'm only forgiving you for my sake, you know? I want to let go of that burden that you left on me. You know, I gotta say, some of the drum work is pretty decent. Ooh the way that the drums were really build up to that final chorus, you know? Not bad. Okay, so that was Flowers. We've talked about it before, you know, very briefly in the short reaction. And I don't know if my thoughts have changed on it that much. I guess I just was a little bit underwhelmed by the single itself, you know? It really doesn't do anything for me. I don't think it has like that much of a kick to it, you know? The lyrics are, you know, very basic and, you know, very like, you know, sort of like, formulaic, I forgot to say. It kind of surprised me that people are really glomming onto this one, you know, it's topping the charts. I think it's like still in the top five, maybe in the, even in the top three. I don't know, it just really doesn't do anything for me that much. I mean, I'm happy that other people really enjoy it and, and if you connect with it, that's great. That's totally uh, cool, but yeah, nothing too special for me right here. So onward with the track. Track number two, Jaded. This opener definitely evokes the feeling of the summer air. Hmm, a relationship that is now long in the past that she has other dreams about. Damn! Like, she knows how to make those vocals just really flow. <laughs> it's impressive. This guitar strumming between the post chorus and the verses, you know, definitely something that evokes some imagery. That is a decent line, you know, I will say that. We went to hell but never came back. We didn't learn from the mistakes. Okay, so that was Jaded, and I guess it has its elements here. Miley is upset that this relationship has died and fizzled out, and the two partners never exactly learned anything from it. And she's apologetic about the fact that they never exactly developed from all that, you know, failed potential, that wasted potential. I, mean, I definitely believe that she sort of feels that, but I, I guess this track just doesn't really do anything for me that much. I guess I kind of just like it's breezy atmosphere, you know? It's like, you know, she's like, you know, walking in the uh, nice summer breeze reflecting on all these emotions that she has. But honestly, it doesn't really do anything for me that much. The guitar strumming is definitely a welcomed element, I gotta say. I really enjoyed that. But other than that, this song has nothing really that stands out for me. So onward with the listening. Track number three, Rose Colored Lenses. Okay, interesting bass line with this nicely mixed drum, okay. <laughs> Are you guys drinking lemonade in bed? Because that might explain your problem. 
Mmm, nice little guitar melody right there during the second verse, I gotta say. The song definitely has a little bit of a country, like, sort of leaning towards it. Okay, we got a little bit of a guitar solo during the first chorus right here. Or maybe that's a saxophone, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so, rose-colored lenses. I think that one is a slight improvement on the other two tracks. Miley is just thinking about how she wants to like, you know, go back to the days where the, her and her partner were very innocent together and, you know, they were just stuck in bed, you know, just, you know, being naked in each other's arms. Just wasting life away and not knowing what's about to come. And, you know, that's exactly what the rose-colored lenses are for, of course. It's a nice track about, you know, wanting to feel innocent and, you know, just lost in your own world and not caring about what tomorrow brings. It definitely has its moments. Like, I do love how the drums are mixed on this tune. And that little saxophone solo, I think, at, towards the end is something to really, like, be wowed by. I would say that this is probably my favorite one on the album so far. It's just decent, I gotta say, but... I think it definitely has something to really offer the listener. Track number four, Thousand Miles, featuring Brandy Carlisle. Mmm, we have a nice little build up right here. Mmm, embracing your inner Mary Morris, I see. Mmm, <laughs> love how the drums sort of enter the chorus right there. Mmm, acoustic guitar doing some really cool work there. That melody right there is nice. Mmm, Brandy, you know, giving us that backup performance, elevating the tune. Yeah, the way this song is composed, I can tell that Brandy had some of her own producers work on Miley's song for this collab. Is this a harmonica solo for the bridge? I ain't, I ain't complaining. This kind of reminds me of that one Harry Styles song that where he just goes like, doop, 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 doop. Kind of trying to remember what that was called. Mm. Okay, so that was Thousand Miles, not to be confused with Vanessa Carlton or Kid Leroy. I think that one sounds pretty nice. Brandy does a lot of support work for Miley on this tune. She doesn't exactly have her own verse, she just kind of blends in the background with Miley throughout the whole runtime. But yeah, I think she's able to bring some Americana to this whole song, you know, really bring some Americana cred to Miley's name. And the song's message is worth complimenting. It's about Miley feeling disappointed at how the relationship ended, but you know, she's gonna keep on trucking and not really worried about where life is gonna take her. You know, a sentiment I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. Some of the instrumentation on this song I also appreciate, like the harmonica solos during the in this instrumental bridge and towards the outro. And the drumming, I gotta say, was a nice little uh, addition. You know, I like how they kind of mixed it there. Yeah, again, this is a pretty decent track and you know, maybe it might be my favorite because Brandy Carlisle is on it and I have a bias. But yeah, I am not disappointed with what I had heard. Track number five, You. Okay, we're taking it very slow, very relaxing at the moment. Oh, I didn't know that Miley had a thing for cigars. <laughs> I can imagine her just giving the bird, like, as the windows roll down. Wow, I guess she's in her uh, Vince Vaughn era. <laughs> Ooh, nice little drum roll right there, right before the chorus. Her voice is extremely raspy throughout the song, like, especially on the chorus. Alright, we really letting the vocals loose on this outro right here. Well, technically not the outro, but you go ahead. Okay, so that was You, and yeah, it has like a lot of bluesy, country sort of melodies to it. You know, something that she really wants to unleash. You know, something that she wants to unleash her emotions on. She wants to do a bunch of crazy, impulsive stuff with her loved one, but she doesn't seem to be able to do that since, you know, they've now broken apart. There's definitely a lot of anguish to find within the tone of the song. And yeah, I think some of the uh, guitar work and the drumming is something to really compliment. Yeah, I do think I sort of appreciate the bluesy atmosphere the song is going for. Track number six, Handstand. Mmm. 
really sort of crescendoing in sound, I gotta say. Past the manta rays, palm trees. Mmm, at least setting a scene right here. Something in Miami or LA. Mmm, you know, kind of looking at the constellations, you know, as the sun has gone down. Yeah, this song it really does kind of feel like you're just surfing through the night sky as uh, you're with your lover. Ooh. Okay, that is a line. I kind of like that one, you know, a little bit of an innuendo, if you would say. Okay, this electro pop sound is very cool. Like something that reminds me of Daft Punk in a way. Okay, so handstand, and I think I actually really like that one. It's the first one that really stands out to me. I love the electro pop sound during the bridge, where everything like really seems to break down and go in chaotic mode. So much of this lyricism is especially impressive. Like the handstand, I believe, is supposed to resemble how Miley is putting so much effort into this relationship and really trying to impress her boyfriend and he keeps on asking for all that monumental effort to keep the romance afloat. And when Miley says, my right one is busy, so I'll use my left hand instead, you could probably conclude what that sort of means. <laughs> it means I've burnt out all of my energy and I don't really have time for you, so I'm just gonna focus on myself at the moment. Yeah, and there's so much to be impressed by here, and I really do think that she's really painting a picture, sort of transporting you to another world, and yeah, there's a lot of goodness to be found in this one. This one absolutely gets a thumbs up for me. Track number seven, River. Okay, progressive plucky guitar, definitely something catches me. Mmm, Miley's feeling extremely fashionable at the moment. <laughs> Mmm, you know, that's the point of the season where, like, spring really starts to hit. Okay, she's really embracing her inner 80s pop diva with this sort of chorus right here. I have very high expectations for you, boy. <laughs> you better be prepared. Backing vocals kind of real neat. Okay, so that was River, and yeah, that's another song that I think actually works for me. Miley is singing about her devotion to this partner because she's talking about how she's gonna get dressed up nice, a little fancy, a little sexy even, and just walk through the park, you know, showing off what she's got to offer. Miley is comparing her boy to a river because he never stops coming, he's always giving the energy, always giving the flow, it's never ending, and she is just desperate for more. Like, she wants it to become even more intense. She's even going as far as to say that he could have her children some day and they they'll look exactly like him and yeah that's definitely a vision that you know is not bad to have again this song has a real 80s vibe to it i love the way that it's all tightly constructed and it really has that nice little up-tempo sort of beat to it it's definitely something you could jazzercise to to say the least and yeah i think this one absolutely does work i am feeling this one track number eight violet chemistry Okay, this, this beat, this bass, not sure if it's the best choice. She's obsessed with cigars and cigarettes. She seems to be like a real ass smoker, like for real. Ooh, kind of hear that little melody in the background right there. Painting a beautiful picture, you know, and just picture us together, you know? Can you feel it? You know, it's something that could last for very long. Not like forever, but very long. You know, this definitely sounds like something you could dance to late at night in the club, you know? Something that you could really get intimate with. Okay, so, Violet Chemistry, and yeah, I think that, again, another one that actually kind of works for me a little bit. Miley is singing about how she really wants to connect with her boyfriend, and how she really wants them to have this real sort of intimacy between one another. They're in this dirty-ass club, and the floor is wet, everything is getting all misty and whatnot, 
and they just want to spend more time together. Or at least she wants to spend more time with him. The lights are coming on and everybody's filing out, but that doesn't mean we have to tactically end the party here. We could just go out back and smoke some cigarettes together, maybe even go to my car, listen to the radio. We won't even have to talk to each other, you know, just enjoy each other's company. I think that's a sentiment I can definitely vibe with. And again, I love the atmosphere that it sets up. It's late and you're getting very dirty, but you're just enjoying each other and that's what really matters. And I think her vocals do sort of complement this beat in a way. You know, it's definitely something that she could work with. Honestly, I gotta say, another thumbs up track for me. Track number nine, Muddy Feet, featuring Sia. Ooh, we got a lot of confidence from Miley on this song right here. Okay, we're hearing a little bit of a trap beat on this one. Very common these days in pop. Mmm, the rough delivery from my day, I gotta say, is pretty, pretty eye-opening a little bit. The little forte piano right there, I gotta say, is pretty neat. <clears throat> okay, here we got, we have the uh, vocals from Sia. <laughs> yeah, you know how I feel about her. Okay, so that was Muddy Feet, and well, it does take a lot of risks. Specifically the risk of including Sia on the entire tune which honestly didn't really feel like it was necessary. She only brings Sia on for like the outro vocals and she doesn't even speak that many words or any words at all. She just sings a lot of ooze. I'm willing to bet that you only brought Sia on for this song because of name recognition alone and because, you know, she's such a big name in pop music. She really does not contribute that much to this song. I guess to talk about the tune itself, it is very intense, like it is kind of neat to see Miley expressing some anger on the song. But I don't know, I feel like it's trying a little bit too hard to be badass and it doesn't really stick the landing. Some of the drumming, I gotta say, could have used better mixing. And honestly, I don't think I exactly vibe for this one. It's not really doing anything for me. Sorry. Track number 10, Wild Card. <laughs> Again, she's laying out that fashion that she loves to uh, put on. Mmm, this relationship is not gonna last as long as you think it is, perhaps. <laughs> I kind of like this melody right here that's sort of carrying the whole tune, you know. Doo -doo 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 -doo. You know, it goes up and then down. That singing on the pre-chorus, you know, definitely is two thumbs up for me. Ooh, ooh. That kind of sounds like Midnight Sky right there. Being a little bit reminiscent right there. Okay, so that was Wild Card, and it doesn't really do too much for me, I gotta say. It's a song about how Miley is trying to make the best out of this relationship because she's a wild card in her own language and that she really wants more from this whole relationship and maybe she could take it deeper, but there's a good possibility that it may not last for as long as desired. That's my best estimation of what this song is supposed to be about. If people could explain in the comments, that would be nice. Instrumentally, it's pretty nice. You know, it has like a nice little intense sort of synth to it, and I enjoy Miley singing on this. Uh, at times, it could be a little bit raspy, but I think it's, you know, it's okay. It's just okay, I gotta say. <laughs> Track number 11, Island. Okay, we have a very mystifying sort of atmosphere going on here. Kind of singing about how she's on a different plane than others, you know, she's lost in her own world. Yeah, I'm kind of having some difficulty navigating my love life at the moment. <laughs> Questioning if she's making the right choices, if she's really pushing people away, or if she's just achieving her own peace of mind. Yeah, a part of her, I don't think, I think a part of her doesn't want to be alone. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> on this bridge. I kind of like the way it fades out at the end, you know, definitely something that catches my ears. And now we just hear the ocean. <laughs> okay, so that was Island, and yeah, something that is definitely something to relax to, or, you know, cry to, or feel depressed at. <laughs> this was definitely a song about loneliness because Miley is singing about being trapped on an island, 
and how people aren't exactly reaching out to her and she's kind of questioning if that's good for her or if that's ultimately destroying her. Is she trapped on an island or is she just chilling in paradise? You know, that's something that her mind is sort of flip-flopping between. And I think she's realizing that deep down she does need someone, you know, someone to romantically spend her life with, someone that she can really like build an attachment with. Because every time that song plays on the radio, her mind wanders back to her man and she's realizing, I think I do kind of miss him. It's definitely able to achieve the tone it's going for, you know, it definitely feels like you're just kind of lonely on the beach, just, you know, strumming away on your guitar, just singing out your woes as you're sort of reflecting on the choices you've made. In a way, it kind of reminds me of August from Folklore, but that might be a little bit too much of a high praise. <laughs> Ultimately, I find this song to just be okay, and again, it does achieve the tone it's going for, but I don't really have anything else to say about it beyond that, so we can just move on. And that is going to bring us to the closing track of the whole LP. Track number 12, Wonder Woman. She's a woman. We got a slow piano ballad on our hands, and she's kind of working it right now. I'm kind of wondering if she's singing this about herself or about someone else that she holds up in high admiration. She's not able to confront her emotions until they spill out of her. This song has an incredible echo, I gotta say. You know, very defiant, something that'll work well in concerts. She sort of chooses moments to sort of break down in privacy because she doesn't want people to see that she's a little bit broken. Ooh! Really strain the voice right there, showing us that passion. Okay, so that was Wonder Woman, and yeah, I think that one works very well as a closing track. It has an echo to it, the piano ballad is very strong, Miley sings with great passion and great emotion and I think it's something that could work very well live. Lyrically, it's about a woman who is perceived as very strong on the outside, very strong when she's out in public, but chooses moments to be vulnerable to herself. You know, she's putting in a lot of hard work to provide for herself, to build a good life for herself, to just survive in a way. But there are moments where that can be a little bit straining and the tears just come running down her face whenever she's alone. I think I'm reading about theories that this could be about Miley's mother, I'm not entirely sure about that, or maybe this could be about just any woman out there, you know, really trying to like survive in a man's world. But I will say that this song does have a lot of power behind it. Uh, Miley's vocals absolutely sell it, and the piano composition, I gotta say, is very nicely put together. Yeah, this is some good stuff here. I'm not complaining about this one whatsoever. With that, I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna come back later once I've listened to the album a second time, and that's when I'll give you my final thoughts. Bear with me. Alright, I am back and I'm ready to give you my final thoughts on Miley Cyrus's Endless Summer Vacation. It appears that with this album cycle, Miley is going for a sound that's a little bit more laid back. It does, however, have moments where it breaks into 80s pop tunes. While that tends to be my favorite portion of the LP, it does make for an inconsistent style. In terms of content, the album is clearly talking about Liam Hemsworth as its main subject throughout the runtime. I can definitely believe that Miley endured some strain throughout their marriage, especially if you look at some of the viral clips on the internet. The emotion is definitely there and it rears its head at times, but the execution is not the strongest it can be. I can't latch onto the lyrics since it follows basic structure and wordplay with only occasional moments of flair. After listening closely, I realize the mixing isn't also very on point, making the sound feel awkward, especially when it comes to the drumming. Of course, a big selling point for ESV is Miley's incredible voice. Like I said, she's probably one of the best vocalists to come out of the 21st century, drilling the listener's ears with some rasp. But if there's anything this album proves, it's that you need a lot more than just a great singing performance. Maybe it's because Miley was following up the critical darling that was Plastic Hearts, but I'm not too enthused about this record and I might forget it later on. I give Endless Summer Vacation 2.5 out of 5 stars. My favorite tracks would have to be Handstand, Wonder Woman, and Violet Chemistry. My least favorites would have to be Muddy Feet, Rose Colored Lenses, and You. And that just about does it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this album reaction. I hope you had fun, and hopefully the Miley stands don't come after me too hard because they know that nothing breaks like a heart. <laughs>
If you want to follow me on social media, be sure to check out my Twitter, my Twitch, and my TikTok. The links are going to be in the description. And that is where we are wrapping up for today. My name is Gabriel Jones, and the sun may be setting, but I hope you were able to soak up those drops. Take care.